My Sister's Marriage by Cynthia Marshall Rich. When my mother died, she left us all of them me to take care of father. Yesterday, when I burned the package of Olive's letters, that left only me. I know that you'll side with my sister in all this because you're only outsiders. And strangers can afford to sympathize with young love and with whatever sounds daring or romantic without even thinking what it does to all the other people involved. I don't want you to hate my sister. I don't hate her. But I do want you to see that we're happier this way, father and I, and as for Olive. She made her choice. But if you weren't strangers, all of you, I wouldn't be able to tell you about this. Keep yourself to yourself, my father has always said. If you have any worries, Sarah Ann, you come to me and don't go sharing your problems around town. And that's what I've always done. So if I knew you, I certainly would never tell you about Olive throwing the hairbrush or about finding the letters buried in the back of the drawer. I don't know what made Olive the way she is. We grew up together like twins. There were people who always thought we were. And every morning before we went to school, she plaited my hair, I plaited hers, for the same mirror, in the same little twist of ribbons and braids behind our heads. We wore the same dresses and there was never a strain on the hem or a rip in our stockings to say to a stranger that we had lost our mother. And although we have never been well to do, my father is a doctor and his patients can't often pay. I know that there are people here in Cockling who think we're rich just because of little things like candlelight at dinner and my father's cigarette holder and the piano lessons that Olive and I had and the reproduction of the anatomy lessons that hang above the mantelpiece instead of botanical prints. You don't have to be rich to be a gentleman, my father says, or to live like one. My father is a gentleman and he raised Olive and myself as ladies. I can hear you laughing because people make like to make fun of words like gentleman and lady, but they are words with ideals and standards behind them. And I hope that I will always hold to those ideals as my father had taught me to. If Olive has renounced them, at least we did all we could. Perhaps the reason that I can't understand Olive is that I've never been in love. I know that if I have ever fallen in love, it would not have happened like Olive at first sight, but only after a long acquaintance. My father knew my mother for seven years before he proposed. It is much the safest way.